This is the second video uh, in our series about standard installations into fireplaces with stoves where you're lining a chimney. And uh, this video starts off all about um, standard, standard cowlings, uh, ways of finishing off the top of your chimney, uh, and does progress on to uh, anti-downdraft cows and slightly more specialist cows because this is a subject that gets a lot of confusion there's a lot of salesmanship and misrepresentation of quite what to go for when and what things do so I hope this is helpful and unpacks those things a little bit really simple what would you put on first what would be well, so simple um, the, the most simple, and I haven't got one here, but hopefully there's a bit of B-roll that's coming on now, um, which shows you a crow guard, which is like a witch's hat, just a few little spikes going up. And the only idea behind that is to keep animals out of the chimney. Um, in Britain, obviously our weather and the birds, it, that isn't necessarily great we probably need something more substantial than that. But the good thing about those cows is they're completely unrestrictive to draw. It is always the best thing to use. Nothing or something just to keep birds out is always the best idea uh, because it's unobstructed. Um, cowlings are things, they are perhaps preventative things. They're things you do because you have to, not because necessarily that's what you want to. Have to do. Okay, so the next I want to keep out rain and birds. Okay, um, so well, yeah, we, so we've got the first one, which is that witch's hat, which just keeps out birds. You then get ones where they just keep out rain, which I'm going to say something which is probably very rude. They've always been called Chinaman's hats, where you've got this sort of legs going up and this sort of domed piece. Um, so they don't have any of this bird guard on it. It's literally just this thing with a couple of legs that go up and um so that is just keeping out rain that just keeps out okay. rain but of course the birds get in yeah. um, and of course this is all area related if you're in a place where there's lots of birds you're going to want something that keeps the birds out if you're in a place that's uh really wet you're going to want to just keep the rain out or you know if if you're in a really dry place with no birds you might want nothing at all. That's always the best answer. Nothing at all. But of course in Britain that's not going to work. So what, um, what are they actually called? The one? Are they just called rain caps? A rain cap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then next you want to keep out rain and birds. So rain and birds is a standard bird guard which attaches to your chimney pot. Um, you have a jubilee clip yep. that clamps yep. around these and of course these hooks stop it from lifting off in the wind. These get a lot of abuse from the wind. Um, basically the thing that fails on them is this blows off in the wind, slowly ages and gets old and then this starts to fall apart and it's because they're in the wind. They get a lot of abuse um, and obviously there's that other type as well where if you're connecting your liner to it it's exactly the same thing, does the same thing, but this is attached to the liner as well and then attached to your chimney pot. And um, again, sorry for people who might not have watched the last video, what are those two things called? So this is a this is a bird guard and this is a pot hanger. They're they're about protecting from rain and birds. They don't do a perfect job. You know, water will always get down into a chimney. Uh, it's part of having a chimney. They need use because they'll always get wet. They do a good job. So next we're probably looking at, at people who struggle with draw? Yes, yeah. So the, the, there is a, a vast array. I can't have them all um, uh, to show you because there are so many anti-downdraft cows out there. Um, this is a huge subject which is complicated and people, are, people get this wrong a lot. The, the first one that everyone thinks of is one of these which spins so for any nerdy little typical bloke like me this is very exciting because it does things it's uh it's a cowling that does things um of course 
the problems with it are that it is very expensive <laughs> um, uh, and not suitable in most cases. So where you would use something like this is, let's say you've got an issue with downdraft where when you've got really high winds, suddenly the, the wind is rushing down the chimney and it causes a right nightmare. It's, got, it's coming from a particular direction. The idea is that this would spin like bilio, creating updraft, and that would counteract that Sorry. issue. Just for people who, like, like me, when yeah. you talk about someone with a serious downdraft issue, yeah. you're not talking about like when you first light a stove and you get some smoke coming out because the flue is cold. You're talking yeah. about when someone's got their their stove up to temperature yes. and they then have an issue. Yeah, that's a fair comment to say that the number one causes of downdraft or poor draw issues are the flue's not quite tall enough or they're not getting the thing hot enough. That is the most common by a mile. And it causes a lot of arguments because somebody thinks they are getting it hot enough and, and in actual fact, stoves need to get very hot and there's a lot of people who don't get them up to temperature. Well, it causes I mean, issues. I was only talking to my brother this week who's just had a thermometer and he was like, I thought I was running my stove too hot. And I wasn't. Yes. yes. He was just running it at a sensible, sensible temperature. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry to just... No, no, no. That's slightly that's... off topic. Okay, so, so you've got a spinning. Um... Yes. Now the, the these, you know, the the trouble with these is, if you've got a problem when there's not much wind, so that's the most a, a common issue. There's no wind, and so there's not much draw. Well, obviously, this isn't going to help you because it's it only spins when the wind blows. So, uh, you know, again, you don't want it. There are ones where you can get powered spinning fans of course the trouble with those is you have one power cut at the right time at the wrong time sorry and um you you know you could kill somebody it, it, you know this this is not a why because if it's yeah. you've had it spinning and it's getting the draw well, and then it stops yeah if you've got a chimney that doesn't draw and some and you've got an electric powered spinning cowling mm. on there i'm not a fan of these i think these are a bad idea um, because one failure of electricity, you, you shouldn't, the, the issue is much more broad. If you've gone to the extreme of a powered spinning fan, you've got to fix your chimney because uh, you're, you're masking uh, an issue with an electric thing, but that electric thing fails one day or you have a power outage at the wrong time, you could kill someone. It, it, this is a this is a bad idea. Um, I've... So you're better off fixing the issue with the chimney. Either it needs to be taller. Yes. Yeah. Or you need to get your stove hotter. Well, it, or... it, no, it can be more complicated okay. than that. In an extreme situation like that, it, it is worth getting some advice. Um, but going back to these, Sorry. this is this is typically just. A spinning cowl for use when you've got an issue in high winds. Um, that is the purpose of them, not any other issue. Um, the other problems with spinning things is, of course, these are spinning on a bearing uh, and that bearing's exposed to the weather. It will rust, it will rot out, it will break and they're blooming expensive. So, you know, all of these things are not jumping for joy to use them they're a, a last resort um okay so we're just going to use that one for high wind correct because the wind's going to help you okay what's yes. next um well then we have uh, an amalgam of of all sorts of anti-downdraft cows you get things like um you'll have, if you're if you're listening to this you've probably got an issue and you'll have probably heard of flu cube um, you'll have seen things like this, which I call a bug cow, and you may have encountered big H pots as well. Um, this is a vedette cow, which is very much like those big H pots. The idea with these is that they trick the, um, the air pressure. Uh, so um, what you, what you can imagine, as I've mentioned, the most common issue is not enough temperature or not enough height. 
if your chimney is on your roof coming up here and a bit like when a lorry goes past you it causes a hell of like a swirl of high pressure and of course if your flue is here and that swirl of high pressure is just above that then you get a problem and mostly these sorts of cows work by they're, they're tall so they just raise you up a bit and they take you out of that pocket of air pressure you spent a fortune on this thing and you could have just done it with a taller chimney pot um so uh you know it's worth checking whether it's a, a height issue you've just got to get out of a swirl of high pressure but um uh these these cows to a certain extent they trick the air pressure um if i if you see down here you can see all the way through so if you've got a downdraft what can happen is the downdraft goes down through this shroud but of course the inner pipe with the holes where the smoke is coming from, whether the wind is going up or down, it creates suction and it pulls the smoke out of it. So it's quite a neat, clever idea. And, and there are lots of different takes on that same sort of idea. So they, they have a use. Um, and as I say, one of the main things they do is make stuff a little bit taller. Um, the other thing that they can do is uh, trick the high pressure air to go down this outer outer piece and suck the smoke down out of the top of the cowl. Um, so they're a clever idea, but um, uh, it's not. None of these are just a solve all. It, solving a drawer issue can be simple. It can very much be a process of elimination, uh, and you know. That's why having a local fitter is really helpful, because if he can turn up with five different types, uh, a local shop who've got all these in stock, and you try this one on the flu, you try the next one, um, there, are, there are a list of problems that cause draw issues. So this is a process of elimination, not a, oh, that fixes it. Anybody who tells you, oh, this fixes it, is an idiot. Because without knowing more about the situation, you have no clue. This spinning cow, oh, it might fix it if you're in that situation. But it does nothing for you if you're in a situation where there's no wind. Um, and same is true here. What's the bug cow? Uh, it, it, the bug cow is, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't raise height. Um, but it's working on the same process where by its... You know, you, oh, the air is sort of drawn. Yeah, down, down, down through, and it, yeah. it, you know, there's, there's, they're, they've got lots of things going on here. They've got a, a little, the wind rushes in, and it sort of loops it up and creates um, a bit of, you know, negative pressure uh, above the flue and and uh, and increases draw. But all of these things only work in certain situations. I think you've got a list of because I've worked. I've worked on drawer issues with, I learned from my dad, of course, uh, and he is, you know, we used to call him, if you've ever seen House, um, with the way he works out, you know, the, the, the ailment of whoever it is that he's supposed to be looking after, and of course he's a complete arse of a person, but, but he's a genius in terms of, obviously it's a story, but we used to call my dad house when it came to draw problems because you could have 50 people look at a job and not know how to solve it and he always did um he he always taught me that cowlings are like a bandage they don't solve the core issue they just sort of bandage you up whilst you get off the battlefield um and you know close off the blood supply so that we can then stitch you up properly this for him has always been a bandage, um, in not not actually solving the root problem. Um, yeah, some of these are quite interesting. These reasons for well, th that's oh. just a list of reasons that I remembered straight offhand mm. of things that me and my dad had solved together, or he had solved alone, or I had mm. solved alone, of things that fixed a drawer issue. Do you want me to go through? Them? Yeah, yeah, read them. So we've got um, the stove in another room. Yeah, that was caused by, um, 
you know, two stoves running, one has a really strong draw, the other one has a weak draw. When this stove was lit on its own, it was fine. The moment you lit the other one, it was sucking so much that it was pulling smoke out of this one. So, you, you know, it's solvable, you need more air, but... Extractor fan in the kitchen. Yes. Uh, wind rushing past a direct air kick, causing a suck in the wrong direction. Yeah, so that's where you've got the air coming into the stove being piped from outside. And of course that comes outside the wall of your house right here. Let's say you've got a wicked wind wish, like wishing past that and causing a suck on that air. It actually starts sucking down the chimney. And of course, most of the time that won't happen because you've got a strong enough draw to overcome it. But if you get to the point where it does, the whole lot reverses and you can create a hell of a mess. Now this one's quite interesting. Needing to open or close a window. So yes. I don't understand opening a window. Yeah, uh, I mean opening a window adds more air to the room. Sometimes, again, just like the direct air kit, right. you've got the window open and it's sucking out of it and causing the problem. Um, I mean, this one is most bizarre. Yeah. Cut a branch off a tree. Yes, yeah, you, you've just got a branch sticking out. The wind is swirling off that, causing oh, right, high like pressure. Up by the chimney. It, well, yeah, it might be near... It, okay. it, it, we, you know... I don't know why I'm sort of imagining like a, a tree down here by the front of your house. Or sort of, no, right, that, that makes more sense. That wouldn't help. This is a tree <laughs> that's disrupting the air and causing an area of high pressure above the flue. Um, swapping the stove from this y to that. Yeah, it's amazing. Different stoves have very different uh, draw characteristics yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you swap the stove, even you have two stoves in the same house, you swap them, suddenly the problem's gone. Phenomenal. Uh, I mean, you don't even know why that would be the case, but it can be. And lastly, um, on, on your list here, is raising the height of the chimney by precisely 12 centimetres. And so my dad came up with this idea that you get a roll of cardboard wrap it round uh, a, basically a, um, we had a, a pipe this was like a flue system and it was a pipe coming out the top of a roof we wrapped cardboard round it and then we raised it whilst the stove was going to see where suddenly we got out of that pocket of air pressure and we were just raising it and raising it and raising it suddenly bang right there that's where it suddenly worked the stove characteristics the draw changed instantly and of course then you go back get the length of pipe that suits and put that on there um but that things like that that's when you say he's like house because he's <laughs> he's there and he's saying okay i want you to pull that down by an inch and he's talking up the chimney or something and it, you know it, this is bonkers stuff um <laughs> okay so um sort of summarise I suppose the most common cause for draw issues are height and temperature um, by a mile that, are... that you're talking 98% okay yeah 98% but there are occasions when yeah when when you, you can them. trick the air yeah. pressure by air rushing down you can um, uh, you can get something spinning uh, I, I never like that option because, of course, it's expensive and they break. Every, you know, they, they tend to last a year or two and then you have to replace them. But sometimes the only answer. Um, and then uh, my least favourite is those electric powered flues. But if you're having problems... It's, it's loads of work because it is a process of trial and error. It's frustrating for everyone involved. And unless you're working with a local shop that is keen to help you, it's expensive. Because unless you've got a local shop that's got 12 of these random cows in stock and you're trying them all out and they'll lend you a length of pipe to raise it by this much or by this much until you finally diagnose the problem. Unless you've got that, you're buying all this stuff. Um, obviously, as I say, you know, 99% of people don't have a drawer issue. 98% of those need to raise their height of their flu or actually get the stove up to temperature a bit. We're talking a microscopic percentage of people that actually need some clever cow. But for those people, magic. 
absolutely magic. You can add something on there and literally drop of a hat, problem just disappears. Um, or sometimes it doesn't disappear, it's just a hundred times better, but still not perfect. But you know what it's like. If you're in a, a muddle with draw, you'll understand this process and um, uh, you'll understand the, the time it can take and, and uh, hopefully this video is of use to you.